Hello, and this is Vitualis the Chess Noob, learning and having fun with chess. Today I'm going to talk about the tactics described in the last video, attacking the f-pawn a little further. In the last video, I played a game with the white pieces against the Karo Khan defense. In this game, I played with the black pieces, and my opponent played the Scotch game. In this game, my opponent also castled kingside, and as you'll see, I coordinate an attack on their weak f2 pawn in the middle game for a win. Please enjoy! Let's have a quick look at the review. Now in this game, we started off reasonably evenly, but I managed to capture a sort of a lead sort of in, uh, towards the end of the opening, uh, and I managed to capture the win. Uh, not the most accurate game for myself, uh, with sort of an accuracy of 75, uh, some inaccuracies, some mistakes, but no blunders. Uh, my opponent played a little less accurately in this game, uh, around 61. Let's have a look now at the analysis. Now I had the black pieces uh, in this game. My opponent led with e4, I play e5, knight f3, knight c6, and d4. So uh, basically the scotch game. Uh, and against this, captures, um, you know, bishop out. I take the bishop out, you know, to basically defend, uh, to defend the pawn. Uh, and now the opponent plays c3. So in this position, um, I'm actually not too sure what to do, other than the fact that allowing the capture is probably bad. So I capture away, um, but you know, interestingly enough, my impression is wrong. So in fact, the best move here is to play knight f6, and that sort of mostly maintains equality. Um, you know, with that move, it does give an advantage um, to white, but I think that advantage, yep, requires a white to play a very aggressive line by taking that pawn um, and then, you know, a number of uh, further attacks with check and come. Uh, I think that's the Scotch gambit, Haxo gambit. Uh, I've, I've sort of met it before. Now in this game the opponent didn't do that, thankfully. Uh, they captured back and you can see if they do that, um, the advantage goes to black. So there was an opportunity for white to do that, and if you don't, uh, it's not so good. Uh, I play uh, knight f6 as a, as a basic developing move. Opponent plays bishop d3. So, so obviously they're not so familiar with the scotch themselves, uh, and this does give me some potential advantage. Uh, here I opted to play a, um, a queen move, um, so you know, with you know, obviously the threat um, to sort of capture like that. Um, the opponent short uh, castles, uh, and just like in the last game, as soon as they short castle, the f pawn has it moved. That potentially becomes a target. And one of the good, um, one of the things with the uh, with the bishop already being on c5, is that that a pawn is already under attack. And more than that, if the king doesn't move, that pawn is in fact pinned to the king. I short castle as well. Opponent uh, plays queen e2. Uh, here I attack, so with d3 to try to blow up the center. Uh, and so my idea here is you know, captures, yep, happy to capture back. Queens look at each other. If they capture, that's potentially good. So captures, and here I whack the queen. Um, that forces that move. Now I capture, uh, you know, uh, what are they going to do? Um, yep, so potentially I thought that was a fairly reasonable move uh, by, by my opponent, and I thought, let's just move the knight out of there, counter-attacking, uh, and they sort of bring their bishop back to b3, so it's good, so you know, they're now attacking my bishop, so I need to just keep an eye on that. Uh, I now decide to bring basically an extra defender, so now one, two, Three. That's basically three defenders on that uh, on that pawn. So, uh, what's the opponent wanting to do? And basically, I'm inviting them to capture. So they chose not to do that. So, yep. Let's bring let's bring the knight out to basically bring uh, to uh, you know basically to get it out and also now sort of attacking that pawn. Yep. The bishop in that position. And these bishops are kind of blocked in. You know, they sort of control the diagonals, but you know that. Bishop is sort of blocked in by their own pawn, and this one can't do anything at the moment. So I put an extra defender onto that knight. 
they make a uh, make a move a3 probably a sort of a kind of a non move and one of the things I did see here is that this bishop only has one square to go uh, and potentially a knight in that position could be very very strong because it would potentially attack both squares so I start to line up to do that they decide to uh, they decide that they didn't like you know that that sort of uh, that tension with the bishop so they captured and that was good for me now the best move I knew was probably to capture back with the knight uh, and maintaining sort of that pawn structure there but I decided to play a bit more aggressively uh, and and by capturing with the pawn even though that weakens the pawn I now have a semi open file for my rook and this rook already controls this file if I have this rook that controls a semi open file I, I'm potentially um, got some pretty good control of the game so I actually whoops so I actually decided to capture with the pawn as you can see is not as accurate as capturing with the uh, with the knight but now that gives my my rook can potential control of that f file and remember I'm trying to attack that pawn they move the uh, they move the they move the uh, the rook to a d1 which yeah possibly wasn't the most accurate move you know stockfish reckons counter-attacking the bishop was probably best and I can definitely see that here now I move the uh, knight along so uh, you know attacking attacking and also counter-attacking there and basically you'll see the opponent having to shuffle rooks trying to defend their pieces now I'm trying to get rid of one of their uh, one of their knights um, to keep the advantage capture back again that shuffle bring it back again shuffle back so basically the opponent is losing tempo shuffling their rook uh, while giving me the initiative and now one two three so very very problematic for white so now I capture if they capture back I can capture back with check so um, they opt to block um, which is potentially okay because now I can just simply move the knight out of the way which now comes with check a discovered check I thought about capturing there but I wasn't so sure I, I wanted to make that trade um, so here I thought I need to get rid of that knight so let's just push the pawn forward and I was gratified to see that stockfish reckoned that that was the best move um, the opponent made a basically a shuffling move moving the bishop there but you know that bishop is basically blocked in by their own pawn it's not contributing to the game next move what are you going to do are you going to lose that knight have to move the knight out of the way and so now with check again so they can either capture of which I'll catch back but most likely they're going to move the move the king uh, and now here I was just so enamored by this idea of the double check that I just felt I had to do it but the best move I think is actually moving the knight here a discovered check um, again the opponent was forced to move uh, their uh, their king out of the way uh, and then I, uh, I have a sort of fairly powerful move a power, fairly powerful move there so the reality is that the opponent is in fact in this position um, in very very big trouble however I opted to make that move and you can see that would sort of lead to a sort of a mating line if I if I chose to do that um, no, they're forced to move now I captured their knight full piece up that rook is under attack happy to absolutely happy to trade at this point but at this point my opponent saw that they were in a seriously losing position or from that weakness on sort of f2 and opted to resign so good game gg in this game a number of tactical themes arise that you might try to incorporate into your own games firstly just like the game from the last video i make use of an opportunity to capture to move my own f pawn out of the way creating a semi-open f file controlled by my rook this wasn't the most accurate move according to stockfish but the three attackers on the f2 pawn overwhelmed my opponent secondly a bishop pinning the f pawn to the king creates powerful attacking opportunities when the pawn is under defended as the sequences often includes a check thirdly a knight and bishop coordinating this attack can sometimes create one of the most forcing moves in check the double check i hope you found this game interesting and thanks for watching